Yes. Yeah. So who starts? You start? Okay. The li- he's he's starting. starting and then she'll translate for oh, him. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Your, your name is? Pedro. 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 I see. I am from Mexico. I see. It's either Spain or Mexico, isn't it? <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Poor joke. Yes, go ahead. What do you do in uh, Mexico? Uh, uh, I am a, a retired professor in uh, consulting in business administration. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. And uh, I have a, a question. Uh, if I understand, first is the thoughts then the feeling and then the action. That yes. The, yeah. But uh, um, I don't know where the... No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. First the thought and then the action. The action. Or your eyes see something. Okay. Ears see something. The biological reaction. And that biological reaction can lead to some Action. Okay. But uh, where do thoughts comes? Where do they come from? Yes, because w- uh, I want to peace of mind, but thoughts. No, ah, this is a very interesting point. What disturbs your peace of mind is not the thought from outside, but thought from outside can only mean thought from the source or God. Where can the thought from outside come? Where is the outside? Outside means the source or consciousness or energy or whatever you call it. That is the source from God. Therefore, if a psychopath gets a thought to murder someone, that thought also came from God. Any thought that arises from outside can only mean the source of God. Then, the the ego gets involved in that thought. Thought, if it's action, the thought turns into, the thought comes. You have to go and do something. You go and do something, finish. But very, so what I call it, the thought, is which comes from outside, which is in the moment, or vertical if you like. But the thinking which bothers you and affects your peace of mind, is thinking in horizontal time, which is done by the ego. Thought comes from outside. The ego gets involved in that thought and gets involved in the horizontal thinking. And this involvement in horizontal, thinking in horizontal time, is what disturbs your peace of mind. A thought from outside cannot disturb your peace of mind. It's a very, very important distinction which I make. And again, frankly, I have not seen that distinction made anywhere else. And there is such an important distinction. And it has amazed me that people haven't, that the masters haven't thought about it. What do the masters say? The trouble with you is your head is always full of thoughts. Isn't that right? The trouble with you is your head is always full of thoughts. You must keep your head vacant. But the point is, the brain cannot deal with more than one thought at a time. How can your head be full of thoughts? At any moment there can be only one thought. That thought may come from outside or that thought may arise when you witness something, hear something, smell something, a reaction to what you see. 
is a thought. Now, a thought from outside is comes from the source. What is a thought which arises, which is not from the outside? I see an advertisement on the TV. I have been interested in, ad, in advertising. When I was working in a bank, I was in charge of the advertising. So I have some technical interest in advertising. So when my eyes see an advertisement on the TV, promptly the thought arises. It's a good advertisement or a horrible advertisement. But it's finished. But I can get I can get involved in it. If I say, oh that is a good advertisement, a bad it's finished. But if I say, why do they do this sort of thing? Don't they have an advertising manager? Doesn't he have any brain? Why does he allow this kind of thing? That is involvement thinking in horizontal time. The intellectual mind, you say, intellectual mind and, and working mind, something like. No, 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 no. What I said was, the where does the original thought come from? It can either come from outside. Or a thought can be a reaction. A, a reaction is a biological reaction, means, but it's still a thought. I was at, or, or I stand here, I see a, a car being parked. I see a car being parked. Promptly the thought arises. It's been beautifully done. Or he keeps the car somewhere and goes away. <laughs> Badly parked. It can cause an accident. That is a thought which arises when my eyes see something. Therefore the thought, but it's still one thought. It may come from outside, or it may be a reaction to a biological reaction. But both are thoughts. And that thought can, whether it's from outside or can lead to horizontal thinking. So a badly parked car. Then what happened? I say it's a badly parked. The end of it. But if I say that man who's gone there, where has he gone? I must find out where he's gone. Find out who he is. Warn him or tell the police. I must do something that is horizontal thinking, thinking in horizontal time. If I decide, well part, badly part, good advertisement, bad advertisement, finish. The thought arises and my mind is again vacant, free to receive another thought. Therefore, all the masters, most of the masters, I haven't come across anyone who has not said Trouble with you, your head is full of thoughts. And I said, that's nonsense. The brain cannot be full of thought. At any moment it can entertain only one thought. Question is whether you let that thought come and go or get involved in that thought. And the involvement means keeping the mind busy with your thinking in horizontal time. Which, if your mind is, brain is busy thinking with, in horizontal time, what does it mean? It means your mind is not open to any suggestion from outside, from God. If I get involved in thinking in horizontal time, to the extent that my mind is busy with, with my involved Thinking, to that extent, I keep myself close to any suggestion from God. Yes, Inga? Therefore, if my mind is vacant, I am free to have a suggestion from God.
for me it's a very, very important point. Trouble with you is that your mind is full of thought, nonsense. Your brain can only tackle one thought at a time. You have a question? No, 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 please can. Yeah, I've got she has only one question. Yeah, I've so got only one question. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe it is not even a question, but uh, it seems to you me, me that the yeah. question or comment. Yeah, comment. Yeah. It makes no difference. Yeah. Go ahead, make your comment. And, yeah, and uh, it seems to me that this thought that uh, comes from the source uh, has no language. Is it s Russian or English? It no, says, uh, <laughs> no, wait a minute. God speaks to you in your language. <laughs> God speaks to me in my language. And it may be He speaks to me in, my, in, in two or three languages. I know my own company, or, my, or, or, or the English. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, what I am talking about, that uh, wh uh, while uh, staying here in India, my thinking is uh, um, mo more often in English. <laughs> Fine, but what does it matter? <laughs> uh, so, uh, God will talk to you in English in Bombay. In <laughs> <laughs> and in Russian, in Russia. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that um, uh, thinking uh, involve, involvement uh, now. Uh, that is think now. Wait, even that is not strictly correct. Thinking usually would be involved in involvement unless that thinking refers to something your technical matter which you are doing a job. If you are doing a job. Thinking still has to be there. A surgeon, he's got his body out there, he has to make an incision. So he says, where do I make the incision? Oh, yeah. Here or here? Therefore he goes back into the past, experience, and then decides, based on his past experience, all that he's thinking, don't forget, I'll make the incision here. So all thinking is not involvement. Thinking which is concerned with the job you are doing is still in the in the in horizontal time. See what I mean. So <coughs> the important point is while your mind is busy with the work that you are doing, to that extent. You keep your mind not vacant for the thought from God. But more important, during that time, you are keeping your thinking mind out. The longer you, well, you work and you are that much time, the thinking mind does not have to bother you. See what I mean? Therefore, frankly, the longer you work without stress, if the work is said with the stress, then it's different. But if you like your work, if you love your work, and you do it, then what is your experience? You work, you work for three hours, and you thought it was only half an hour. You don't like the work. You work for half an hour and think you have been working for two hours. Stress. Therefore, even there we have to be clear. If the thinking is in regard to a job you are doing, that thinking is in the matter of here and now, in the present moment, <coughs> which is necessary. Otherwise the job can't be done. But if the thinking is not concerned with you, but is just vacant thinking from the past, digging into the past, creating fears and hopes and ambitions and projecting in the future, that is the trouble, that is the involvement in horizontal. 
and uh, the uh, continuation of the talk <coughs> with you during the day uh, in, in, in my thinking in uh, in my uh, in my thoughts uh, yeah, uh, during the day yeah, I, I I have uh, I mm, uh, I go on talking to you uh, answer answer uh, ask questions and uh, trying to get answer go on talking with you <coughs> it is thinking Talk, mind. No. Uh, talking with me yeah. <laughs> is doing something in the present moment. Not, but even if not now, if it is during the day. Yes, even that, yeah. Thinking on that, yeah, that would be still w your working mind. Working mind, not it, thinking. <laughs> not the thinking. Working mind, working on a problem concerned with the teaching. You see? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yes, Pedro. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, when you get involved in your thoughts, how can you just... That's the term Witnessing? Wit witnessing? Yes. What is witnessing? Witnessing is observing. Observing means seeing, listening, smelling, tasting, touching. Either any of the senses. You observe something. There is a reaction, biological reaction. There is a biological reaction, but there is no judging. You see anger arising in a body-mind organism. That I witness a bo anger arising in a body-mind organism. You say, he is an angry man. He is a dangerous man. I must keep away from him. That is the difference. Observing means observing and judging. Witnessing means observing without judging and condemning. That is the difference between observing and witnessing. When you, when you totally accept, no one really does anything. Everything is a happening. Then what happens? Then you witness, whatever, you witness a same incident, anger arising in one, fear arising in another, disgust arising in a third, compassion arising in a fourth. You don't decide that the man, he is a compassionate man, nice man, good man. This man, angry or afraid, you have judged as good and bad, condemn someone and praise someone, which is judgment. So if you merely witness the reaction that happened as a happening based entirely on the biological programming, then you don't judge anybody angry or compassionate. You merely witness a biological reaction arising in a body-mind organ. You don't judge someone as good or bad. That is the difference between observing and witnessing. One moment, please. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Oh, you have only one question. Yes. You have a particular question regarding what I've said? Yes. Go yes. ahead, please. It Go ahead. triggers me from some time to ask you that question. Quite right. In fact, that is what I want. Yeah. Um, uh, your name is? Jaya. Jaya? Jaya, yeah. yeah. Uh, what part of the world from are you? From France. France, I see. And I was here five years ago. I see. <laughs> what yeah. do you do in France? Right now, nothing. But I was doing carpentry. 
Yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Some massage too. I see, I understand. Yeah. Both very useful items of work. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps your mind on the job. Yes, yes. <laughs> Keep your thinking mind out. Yeah, well, <laughs> lately, I've mostly done nothing, so I've been having my mind more busy. Even there, but if your mind is busy on what we're talking about, it's not the thinking mind. Yes. yes. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Yes, so go ahead, your question now. Um, you've been following Ramana's Maharshi teaching for so long, many years. Long, long time, yeah. Yeah. And then you, you met uh, Nizagadatta Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, I think that... Um, oh, even before that, I met earlier Guru for 20 years. Yeah. But Ramana, I think he was kind of a compassionate man. He had a lot of patience with people. Yeah. And uh, I've heard from you and from some people that um, Nisargadatta Maharaj had a, a short fuse. He could get uh, angry very quickly. No. You're wrong. <laughs> Ramana Maharshi did anger did arise even in the case of Ramana Maharshi, uh -huh. but fewer times because he didn't have a short fuse. Anger arose more often in a body mind dog known as Nisargadatta. In both cases, anger arose less times in Ramana Maharshi, more times in Nisargadatta. Uh -huh. Neither Ramana nor Nisarga. Nisargadatta got angry. That is the point. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a strong con conditioning through lots of um, the teaching of lot teachers. Um, and I think I have a tendency to, I had the tendency to uh, to give credit to a teacher according to his kind of peace of mind. And at first I would be as, um, doubtful about uh, someone who has anger. And I just wonder how could you accept um, Nizagatata as a, a real a man of understanding? Man of understanding yeah. with peace of mind. I'll tell you. I'll tell you an actual instance. So, so beyond his uh, reaction, you could feel that there was peace on the background? You will see it when you listen to what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what happened once was I was doing the translation for Nisargadat. He said something. You know, he talks and they mumble, whatever it is. I couldn't hear him. So I said, Maharaj, will you, will you please repeat that? I said, will you please repeat that? Anger alone. <laughs> What's the matter, but is your hearing becoming less? <laughs> Are you getting short of hearing? Anger alone. So my reaction was, knowing Maharaj, knowing that he, he that yes, that anger arose and he didn't get angry, that he was totally enlightened. Really knowing that, my reaction was, I said, yes, Maharaj. My hearing is getting affected, my eyesight is getting affected, because I'm getting old. And I was twenty years younger than Maharaj. <laughs> Quickly he appreciated the humor of it. One moment, anger. Next moment, laughter, big laughter. One moment, anger, another moment, laughter. Even that is, they understand, man of understanding. If the understanding were not there, then what would have happened? What is likely to have happened? Then the person who said, who, who got angry, he would have said, Ramesh made me angry. I shall not laugh at his joke. So, his, his face might have wanted to laugh, but he... <laughs> <laughs> so he would have restrained his laughter. Ramesh made me angry. I'm not going to laugh at his joke. Mm. But here, 
anger one moment, huge laughter, genuine laughter, the next, next moment. No involvement. No involvement. See what I mean? But when, when you know that it is the, the source um, being active through um, the, the person that asks the question, if Maharaj knows that it's not someone, but it's the source asking a question, why sometimes you were saying, why do you ask stupid questions? He, he should know that, no, that's not his thought. It's the source asking a, uh, the questions for a body-mind organism. There again, that is a biological reaction. Anger. Whatever the cause of the anger, yeah. it was anger. So, so there can be peace of mind and still having a reaction of anger. That peace of mind on the background. There can be anger, there can be grief, there can be pain, there can be pleasure, and yet my peace of mind is not disturbed. Yeah. Why? Important point. Why? Because in my peace of mind, the other is not concerned. Whereas in the biological reaction, pain. I'm, I'm in pain. I had no control over it. Something happened which caused me pain. Something happened which caused me, gave me pleasure. Something happened which brought anger about. So whatever happened is a happening according to God's will, cosmic law. So with that understanding, my peace of mind is not disturbed. Pain or pleasure, what is the basic understanding? The basic understanding is no one can have any control over what the next moment will bring. Pleasure or pain, physical pain, psychological pain, one kind of pleasure, another kind of pleasure. No one can know. All one can do is if there is pleasure, enjoy it. If there is pain, suffer it. That acceptance itself means peace of mind. Mm. And how did it happen, that shift in you? Because I think um, everyone in all different uh, spiritual traditions were conditioned to expect some improvement with the understanding. Coming, lo coming along with the understanding, some improvement, like becoming more compassionate, more peaceful, more nice or generous. How did it shift in you that you start to disconnect the improvement with the real understanding happening? Did you understand? How did it happen in you? How did it happen? Because it was my destiny, God's will, cosmic law. And is it, did it happen with the meeting of uh, Nizagada Tamaraj, especially with his teaching? Or no, I, I had that earlier. Uh -huh. But what did happen during this I I knew it was that I was not the doer. But the experience of it happened during Maharaj's time. The experience, 99 points, I knew it. But for that one percent brought about the experience. <coughs> when it was ninety-nine percent, if somebody said, "Are you are you are you prepared?" I said, "Totally." I said, "Yes." I would have said, "Yes." Then, if he, are you prepared to take a lie detector test? <laughs> Even then I would have said yes, but I wouldn't have been sure. <laughs> Even then I would have prepared, yes, I am prepared to <laughs> Wondering also what the, it might be interesting, then I'll know. But my answer even then would have been yes. Yeah. But, without me, but when that experience happened, then there was no doubt, not even 99.9, 100%. So 
So if that experience had not happened, I would still have accepted, I am not the doer. So what happened there was an actual experience that the translation was happening and I was not doing the translation. Now that was an understanding even before, but on a particular occasion, on a particular occasion, I found, you see, in, in the normal translation, even if I didn't do it, I'm, I didn't do it for the translation to happen. There had to be a process in time. I had to listen to what Mara said in Marathi, understand what he said in Marathi, most important, then translate it into English, choose the appropriate words which will which will make the other, uh, many foreigners, they would understand and then I would speak, then the speaking would happen. So there is some time lag between them. Even this process, not my doing it, I was quite sure, but that process would have taken some time, split second, maybe three seconds. But on that particular occasion, this process was not there. This process in time was not there. I knew exactly what Maharaj would say. I was waiting for Maharaj to stop speaking. And the moment he stopped speaking, translation poured out. <laughs> this process was not there. The translation just poured out. And after that, someone else he said, Ramesh, this morning you were informed. You you translated, you were informed. So I said, How do you mean? So he said, You were talking as if you were doing the talking, not <laughs> Nishagulatna. He said, You spoke with an authority. Your voice was stronger, louder, and you made gestures which you never did before. <laughs> I knew what was happening. What was happening with this process in time was not happening. Listening, out came the translation. As a happening, as a spontaneous happening. Spontaneous and prompt happening, without this process. But it is still that 99% and 100%. That 1%, this happening, was that 1% needed. Mm. <laughs> and it can only happen... It can only happen way. when it is supposed to happen, yeah. Yeah. according to your destiny, God's will, concept, cosmic law. Therefore, Jaya, therefore, what? Therefore what? Therefore relax. <laughs> therefore relax. It will happen if it is supposed to happen. Supposing it doesn't happen. That's the point, isn't it? Therefore. Supposing it doesn't happen. All right, it doesn't happen, so what? If it doesn't happen, what will ha if it doesn't happen, what will happen? Jaya will not have that peace of mind. Jaya will have to live the rest of his life, as he has lived so far, in reasonable comfort, but without peace of mind. That's all that will happen. Because once the body is dead, the identified consciousness, as a separate entity, Jaya, it is no longer required. So once the body is there, the identified consciousness as the ego again becomes impersonal consciousness, 
irrespective of the fact whether in that ego during the last little for some time doership was there or not. Once the identified consciousness again becomes impersonal, no question whether there was understanding or not. Whether there was peace of mind when you were alive does not count. Therefore, every ego, every identified consciousness again becomes impersonal consciousness irrespective of whether the ego was a psychopath or a saint. Makes no difference. Why? Because it is the same soul identified with a, with a psychopath and creating a body-mind organism with that genes and conditioning so that psychopathic actions would happen through that body-mind organism. Whether he knows it or not, fact is that. If I am aware of that fact, I have peace of mind. If I am not aware of the fact, I don't have peace of mind. But the fact is a fact. Therefore, I keep on saying, a saint didn't choose to be a saint. The psychopath didn't choose to be a psychopath. Therefore, the saint cannot earn merit. The psychopath cannot commit a sin. Isn't that a very important point? Yeah. When the body is there, irrespective of what the ego was, that ego identity again becomes impersonal consciousness. If a river joins the ocean, the river becomes the ocean. Whether the water in the river was pure or full of dirt <laughs> makes no difference. There's some uh, teacher that says that to have peace of mind, you have to stop the flow of thoughts. And for that, there's a lot of techniques like meditation or any kind of practices. Um, so they, it, it creates a goal that to reach peace of mind, you have to stop the thinking. What do you think? Can, be, can peace Wait of mind be there two, even, two, even if there are thoughts or no thoughts? Wait a minute, two aspects. One is you are supposed to do something. Yeah. And that is your birthright in any situation. You are free to do anything he wants to improve himself physically, mentally, temperamentally, morally, or financially. But the whole point is he nobody ever had any control over whether his efforts will be successful or not. Therefore, anybody is free to do whatever he wants to be a perfectly perfect moral man. But if he does not remember that the, that the result has never been in his control and he keeps on wanting the result, he will be frustrated. But if you keep in mind I can do whatever effort I want and enjoy the effort being made, no problem. With the understanding that you may or may not succeed, or you may succeed 90%, or you may only succeed 50%. Yeah, yeah. Um, but is it um, when the flow of thought stops? Flow of thinking. Yeah, flow of thinking stops. Not flow of thought. Yeah, flow of thinking. Would, would you say that it's that peace of mind is... Yeah. It? If the peace of mind is to happen, the stopping of the flow of thinking has to happen.
And would you say that when you are right now sharing with us, and uh, uh, is do you have more peace when you are kind of alone and not thinking and not having the the flow of uh, thinking? Then yeah. it is not peace of mind. If I have peace of mind only in certain times, yeah. in certain places, in certain circumstances. It is not peace of mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peace of mind is when I have my peace of mind, irrespective of whether I'm enjoying pleasure or pain mm -hmm. in the moment. So you're not pursuing the the peace of mind that uh, uh, happens when you are without thinking and without talking and uh, not kind of pursuing the meditative space of being now, without Are you thoughts. talking of the effort or are you thinking of my present state? Pre present state. In my present state, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why, Jaya? Because the whole basic understanding is I'm not doing anything, I'm not the doer. Everything is a happening. Whether the happening is what the society calls it good happening and I, I get pleasure, God's will my destiny. In the other way around, also my destiny. Therefore, that doesn't affect my peace of mind. So you're choosing. I'm not choosing. That is the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> that is the whole point. I'm not choosing. But and you exert your free will. You say you have the choice. You, you can do whatever you want. Yes. So you, you make choices. Therefore, I make the choice knowing that I'm not making the choice as if I'm making the choice. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't make your peace a, of mind a, a, according a, to your choice. A beggar playing the role of a king on the stage. Does he think he's a beggar? He'll be a very poor actor. Mm. Mm. And he's on the stage, he's a king. So you're not pursuing peace of mind through your choosing, through, through your, your choice process? No. Every body, mind, organism has its preferences in every way. This body, mind, organism also has preferences. Anything. Shape, color, whatever. So when my preference is satisfied, I enjoy the pleasure of a, of a preference being satisfied. Mm -hmm. But if my preference is not satisfied, I don't pursue it. Because pursuing a preference means inviting frustration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I certainly enjoy my preference being satisfied. Mm -hmm. But if it is not satisfied, I take it that it is not my destiny to have the pleasure of my, sa of pre of my uh, preference being satisfied. I accept that. So it doesn't affect your peace of mind? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Okay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Your name is? Arshia. 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 Yeah. From Bombay? Yes. I'm Hina's daughter. I'm sorry? I'm Hina's daughter. Oh, 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 oh. I see, I see, I see. I see. Some resemblance. <laughs> you are prettier. Thank you. <laughs> My preference. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Aisha, go ahead. Um, it's a question relating to this. Yes. Um, if it's thoughts regarding your loved ones. Yes. So if it's feelings regarding your loved ones, whether it's pain or pleasure. Yeah. You can't help but think horizontally. 
So then what does one do with those thoughts? No. What happens? What happens is a biological reaction which is pleasure or pain. When something close to you wins a prize, the biological reaction is pleasure. Mm -hmm. When someone close to you fails in his examination, doesn't get a job, pain, still pleasure or pain as a biological reaction over which you have no control. But then as a biological reaction, because it's a loved one, you feel like, why did he fail? Maybe he should have studied better. You get into that. That is your <coughs> egoic reaction to what was originally a biological reaction. And that is your suffering. Therefore, pain and suffering, pleasure and happiness, totally different. What arises is pain, or something happened to your loved one, or pleasure. When the ego reacts to it, it says, I am happy that my son won the prize. I am unhappy because my daughter failed. That is the egoic involvement in what was originally a purely biological reaction. Therefore, a man of understanding, same thing happens. Even in the case of biology, a man of understanding, pain may happen, pleasure may happen, exactly the same. But when pleasure happens, he enjoys the pleasure. Pain happens, he suffers the pain. But he doesn't get involved egoically into what is a biological reaction. First, there is a biological reaction. Question is whether you get involved in that biological reaction or by observing it and getting involved or you merely witness and therefore not get involved. But the important point is the basic reaction is biological reaction. Whether the ego gets involved in it or not is happening depending on your on your destiny, God's way, cosmic law. So it's not that if the person is close to you, you can't help but the ego get involved because it's a loved one. No, that depends. Well, in fact, I would go. The intensity of the grief could be much more than a man of understanding. But still he will not be involved. Which means the same happening happens to you and me. You will have grief or pain, I'll have grief or pain. But my grief or pain may be much more deep. And yet, I will not get involved in it. Therefore, even that intensity of pain has nothing to do with whether the ego will get involved or not. So you can also just witness and feel that pain or pleasure. You don't have to be involved just because it's a loved one. Yes. In other words, you observe something and get involved in it. You judge it. It happened to me. Or you witness it as a happening, happening to a body, mind, organism. And you don't get involved in it. But that again is your destiny. And your original destiny, whether you get the understanding or not, is your destiny. And if you have the destiny, you don't get involved in it. That also is. A result of this understanding. Okay. Yes.
No, ma fai la domanda. Quella che scegli, scegli di uno. Non questa. Sì. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. He, he needs to speak. I know. And then I translate. You are going to translate. Yeah. Go ahead. Riguardo al discorso della reazione biologica. Concerning. Riguardo, riguardo yeah, yeah, yeah. No. a quanto stava dicendo. No, I tell you what. Don't speak to me or him. Speak to. Okay. Speak to someone in that corner. Yeah. Più lontano okay. possibile, quindi alza la voce. Allora, eh, la domanda riguarda il, quello che stavi dicendo mh, sulla reazione biologica e vorrei capire fino a che punto invece il condizionamento eh, emotivo risponde a questa... Eh, My question is about the biological reaction yes. and I would like to know up to which point <coughs> the emotional conditioning si, eh, interferisce. interferes with my, uh, my reaction. Nel senso, se sono, per dire, eh, razzista. As an example, I am racist. E provo rabbia. He no, 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 I give an example. Yeah. I am a racist person, xenophobia. I don't like people, strangers that yeah. don't like me. Yeah. Mi arrabbio. So I get angry if I see somebody, for example, different <coughs> skin yeah. color of mine, let's say. La, ra la rabbia che arriva è solo condizione. È solo un condizionamento, so the non c'è niente di biologico. Arises is just a conditioning, um, condition no, wait a minute. Anger arising. The anger is based on the genes and conditioning in this body-mind instrument. Capisci? Che la, la rabbia arriva a causa dei miei geni. Dei tuoi geni e dei tuoi condizionamenti. It is a happening. È un accadimento which has happened because it was supposed to happen. But whatever effect or result on him, his name you said it? David. 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 Ah, yeah. You see what I mean? Whether anger arises or compassion arises. Same thing. In one case, anger may arise. In another, compassion may arise. Both depend on the genes and conditioning in the respective body, mind, organism. Over which the individual has no c control. And each is a happening. Ma può cambiare vuol dire tu? Sì, però può, ci può essere un cambiamento. But cioè, what David posso says maturare yeah. il mio rapporto con. Uh, by, he says by witnessing and understanding mm, where where the f this uh, anger comes bubbles up from I can through my life change wait and minute, become wait a minute. no is, longer racist what but compassionate. What is the understanding? What is the understanding? The understanding itself is that everything is happening according to God's yeah. will, cosmic law. How each happening affects whom from better or worse? Through which body, mind, organism when the happening happens? In all according to God's will, cosmic law, the human being does not, is not capable of doing anything. That is the understanding. One other question. Dunque, se tutto è predeterminato. If everything is uh, mm, predetermined, pre predetermined, pre yes. predetermined, e quindi anche l'illuminazione secondo so, lui. So therefore even enlightenment. Indeed. Yes. And to understand that is very important. Ma allora perché yes. eh, persone come Krishnamurti eh, eccetera dicono che chiunque può raggiungere l'illuminazione mm -hmm. adesso? And so my question is why, if so, why people like uh, Krishnamurti were saying, said that uh, everybody can uh, reach enlightenment no. uh, now, in this life? 
because that ignorant foolishness had to be there in that organism according to God's will, cosmic law. And he is destiny. Che era il suo destino a dire così? In quel momento, in quel body mind, mente, corpo, organismo, c'era questa risposta che era ignorante e, e, e stupida un ah, po' sì. come, a secondo le, la legge cosmica di Dio, doveva arrivare così. Ah, lui dice che è una, 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 sì, una sciocchezza. Una bufala. So, Dimi devo dimenticarlo. So I have to forget about uh, this uh, concept, Krishna Murti. Krishna Murti declaration. Now, Better to forget about this. Yes, now <laughs> there is Krishna Murti concept and Ramesh's concept. Yeah. Which concept David is able to accept? Yeah. Is also his destiny, God's <laughs> God. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> So there is no escape. <laughs> there is no escape <laughs> from what is predetermined. <laughs> But the fact remains, let him not forget. <laughs> that when he is here now, Krishna Murti is dead. <laughs> che mentre siamo qui il Krishna Murti è morto, non c'è. <laughs> so the conditioning is getting from me a fresh conditioning. <laughs> Quindi, hai capito? The fresh conditioning can, can change or amend his existing con or they want to transform it. Trans yeah, of course this is so. I wish Krishna Murti was alive to, to, to hear the man. It can either amend or even transform. Ma comunque vorrei dirgli che trovo che trovo pericoloso in ogni modo questo modo di vedere la cosa perché ti porta a non agire. Sì, sprofonda la nave, rimani nella nave. Uh, David says, uh, I find quite uh, dangerous, a bit dangerous, this uh, 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 concept, this idea that everything is prede prede predetermined, because one can maybe just uh, think, you know, and, and not try to improve life, maybe, but sink, sink down, I mean, if it, it will happen. That is his destiny. <laughs> <laughs> But if it is destiny to remember, in any situation, I'm free to improve, do anything to improve myself. Which is a fact. One or the other. It's your destiny. Finché non ho capito che non sono colui che fa. And even that is predetermined. <laughs> Sono libero di fare quello che voglio, mm. cioè di mettermi alla prova mm. finché non... Uh, Questa è un'altra domanda. Sì, sì, è una... An another kind è una of conferma, question, or uh, he asks confirmation that uh, he's, uh, he has the free will to do whatever he wants to do until he to will... To improve himself, yeah, so that physically, mentally, himself, temperamentally, yeah. financially. But he says, until I will deeply until I will deeply understand that I'm not the doer I'm, I have the free will to improve my life at the different levels and then once I will understand com fully deeply that I'm not the doer I will also maybe stop to improve my life <coughs> this is a kind of question and you're asking confirmation yes but the point is improving one's life is something one does as part of one's daily living. Yes. Why do I want Why do I want to improve myself in a particular way? Physically, mentally. Mm -hmm. Because after that I shall do things which will give me more pleasure. So if I succeed i will have more pleasure. <coughs> But whether he succeeds or not is already predetermined. 
うんあれもう really important point here if this happens in a given situation why should the basic point about this which is generally called fatalism if everything is already predetermined why should i do anything you see that's the basic question why should i do anything in any circumstance The answer is you cannot do nothing for more than a very little time. Five minutes, ten minutes, two hours, maybe four hours. After that, the energy functioning through this body-mind instrument will function and bring about precisely what is supposed to happen. You are not the doer anyway, whether you believe it or not. You are not the doer. Okay. Sì, la prima parte. Ti puoi fare una volta tre quattro ore qualcosa in poi, ma poi. Però poi non puoi. Puoi fare qualcosa. Eh, yeah. Puoi fare qualcosa mh, per un determinato tempo il tuo organismo, mente, corpo per tre quattro ore, ma poi. Eh, quello che deve succedere, eh, emergerà succede. quello che dovrà emergere mh, dal tuo Però organismo. Però comunque quelle 3-4 ore, ore non sono, cioè comunque non sono colui che fa, cioè nel senso non è che sono io a muovermi ma è il mio destino. But no? even in these 3-4 hours you were mentioning of this body mind organism does something to improve uh, life yeah, he, so even he is still not the doer. That is right, therefore in all that the ego can do is to postpone it for a little while. Mm. Postpone the not doing. Yeah, postpone it for a little while. l'ego poi farà oh, ho capito. And even that, predetermined. E comunque anche quello è predeterminato. Even that is predetermined. <laughs> the whole thing be a little bit. So. And even that being delayed is predetermined. Yeah. Okay. No, no. But the important point is He, whether he believes it or not, he is not the doer. Mm. Therefore, who does the doing? The energy does the doing through this instrument. I have a question as well. Please, please, Why go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, many of us uh, seekers, people that uh, are searching, and they're trying to find this peace of mind, peace of heart, uh, carry, often carry kind of a heavy bag, pa- backpack of, I don't know, grief, anger, that is in this body-mind that organism. That is the conditioning. What? That is the conditioning. Fresh conditioning, what I talk to you is fresh conditioning. Yes, first condition. That fresh conditioning can amend or change or lessen the burden or even remove the burden altogether. But what happens my, is your destiny. My question is, what do you suggest to us, carrier of grief or anger or that comes from the conditioning, the, the environment or the family or the gene conditioning. Wait and see. We witness it. And Wait and see what happens. That's all. <coughs> Wait and see what happens. Whatever happens will depend on the speed with which the understanding goes deeper and deeper. So observe it. Any change that happens can only depend on the speed with which the understanding goes deeper and mm. deeper. You can only wait and wait and watch. Wait and observe or just wait? 
<laughs> if you can wait without observing, don't observe. <laughs> so how big you not observe? Keeping your eyes closed, yes. <laughs> And that is not possible. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right. Yes. Please. When I read Ramana, yeah. Zagadatta, yeah. Maharaj, um, it seems that they have a different focus. Uh, their understanding has a special shape. No, wait, <coughs> where is the difference? The concepts you see, are used. Wait, you, are, you see a difference between the two. Yeah. The fundamental concept is not different. Yes. I agree. Agree. The fundamental concept is not different. Yeah. And yet, you see a big difference between them. Or do you not? Yes. So, where can the difference lie? The basic understanding is the same. Yes. So, where can the difference lie? In the genes. In the mm. genes mm. and the two mm. body-mind organisms. And their destiny. Yeah, because they, they give a special focus. Like R Ramana gave a focus on who is who is asking the question, who is the, the thinker of the soul. Let's be clear. What yeah. is the focus Ramana Maharshi gives, as, as you see, different focus. What is the focus Ramana Maharshi gives? Uh, the inquiry of uh, who is who is ask who is who is the who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Yeah. yeah. No. There, who am I? What do you think he means by I? Who am I? Yeah, I mean the, the process of that inquiry, I Wh think. What yeah. does he mean by I? The does source. he mean Jaya or does he mean the source? The source. He means the source? Yeah. How can you know who the source is? Because that's all there is. Then where is the question of any inquiry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, he doesn't say find out who the source is. He says find out who this Jaya is. Who find out who this Jaya is. Then when he goes into it, what does Jaya find? Jaya says, who, who is this me? Fundamentally, this me cannot be anything other than a three-dimensional object. Who is this me? Who am I? Who is this me? Fundamentally, it can only be a three-dimensional object. One object among trillions of objects may making up the manifestation. Then, who lives his life? As Jaya. The liver of the life is the me. The witness. The witness is the source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The witness is the source. Mm -hmm. The witness is the source. Therefore, you find one in this body mind organism is an object. Then, if, if if Jaya is fundamentally a three-dimensional object, who is living his life as Jaya? 
Who that is the inquiry? Mm, mm, mm. Who is living his life? And uh, then you come to the conclusion that Jaya can only be the source. That I'm, but what he means is, then who is living his life? And Jaya, no answer. And the inquiry stops. Inquiry stops. That is Ramana Maharshi's focus. Mm -hmm. What do you think is Nisargadatta's focus? Um, Did he have a focus? <laughs> yes, he invites us to, to come to the source before the... What is the focus? Ramana Maharshi, who am I? Who is this me? Is the focus? Yeah. What is the focus? Nisargadatta. <coughs> to come to the point, um, um, previously to the birth and death process, where you, are, where you are coming from? What was your face before your, your birth? No. This is that the only focus is, uh, I am that. I am that. Mm. Yeah. Jaya is that. Mm. That's all. Mm. Ramana Maharshi says, find out who this me Jaya is. Nisargadatta says, Jaya is that. Along with that, you have to accept Ramesh is that, he is that, she is that, everyone is that. Mm -hmm. That is his focus. He doesn't move from that focus. Yeah, yeah. What is my focus? Yes. My focus is who is this me who thinks he's living his life, believing that he is the doer of every action. Is he really the doer of any action? That is my focus. And I find that focus more practical to me. Would you say that it's kind of more up-to-date or refined from the, the Ramanas and the uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj's uh, focus? No, all I'm saying is that three different focuses. And if you try to combine them, mm. Mm. you'll be lost. Yeah. There'll be frustration. Because these are only three. If you look, you'll find a hundred yes, focuses. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you will need ten lives to go through all the hundred yeah. focuses. <laughs> so, so as um, any concept cannot convey uh, the experience itself of deep understanding, uh, Maharaj said that, that he met his guru and he believed what his guru said. So it seems that there's a point where you have to choose who you're going to believe and just trust and stop comparing any... So, so do, do, you, do you mean that... So, yeah. then Nishayi Ramadha Maharaj should explain where he bought that belief. Where did he buy that belief? How did he have that belief? You would also like to have that belief. Where do you buy that belief? You don't have that belief. He had it. Mm. You don't have that belief. Yeah, yeah. Where are you supposed to go and buy that belief? They said that well, that doesn't explain that. Yeah. Nobody asked that. <laughs> the answer is, it can only happen. happen. It was in his destiny for that to happen. And I feel that at a certain point, a certain point I have to, to decide, okay, I believe, I believe your concept, and I stop comparing. No, then, you accept my, what is my, 
my focus. Everything that, that happens is God's will. Every, and how each thing affects you for better or worse, through which body, mind, organism it happens, which the society calls my action or your action, is also God's will, cosmic law. Yeah. The human being is incapable of doing anything. What is my... The human being is incapable of doing anything. Everything is according to God's will, because that is my focus. So everyone other, is, is programmed in a way to believe at a certain point different beliefs from different teachers. It seems to be... To appear that, to me like that. If some people follow some teachers, they have the, the programming of believing... They, not programming, that is their destiny. Destiny. Mm. That is their destiny. But it is your destiny that you have come here. Yeah. It is your destiny that you have listened to me and you accept that what is going to happen is not in your control. So the ultimate acceptance is intellectually even a damn fool will accept the concept that no one is a doer because it brings peace of mind. Why do you know that you have peace of mind? Because I, I say, I have it. Yeah. I have peace of yeah. mind. I did not have peace of mind. Now I have peace of mind based on this concept. Yeah. You see? So, the real problem is, intellectually, even a damn fool will accept this concept. Because accepting that I am not the door and the other is not the door, my relationship between me and the other becomes very harmonious. I don't have to fear the other, the other doesn't have to fear me. This brings peace of mind. Therefore, the final point is, intellectually even a damn fool will accept it. But the concept cannot work unless the acceptance is total. And since you are not the doer, you can do nothing about it. Therefore, it will happen only if it is supposed to happen. Mm, mm, mm. According to your destiny, God's will, cosmic law. That is the final point. But then they understand, then your question refers to your daily living. So your question, which I think is a valid question, which unfortunately neither Ramana nor Nisarga go into it. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for something to happen, while I'm waiting for God to make up his mind, what do I do in this daily living? Ramana Maharshi says, inquire, who am I? And when you don't find the answer, the me will disappear. That is Ramana Maharshi. Yeah. My point is, waiting for something to happen, there is one thing you can do, and that is what I call, Ramana Maharshi calls it personal inquiry, I call it personal investigation. And what is my personal investigation? Personal investigation into a particular action that has happened. And to find out whether that action is really your action or not your action. Therefore, I say, take any action which you are sure is your action. You see, other actions I don't know, but this one is my action. I'm convinced about it. And I challenge anybody to prove to me that it is not my action. Then you investigate that action. And how do you investigate it? Very simple. If I consider this action as my action, did I decide to do that action at a particular time? No, I didn't. Then you investigate. 
if I didn't do, decide to do that action at a particular time, how did the action happen? Then you remember. You had a thought. And that thought led to your action. And nobody has ever had any control over the, what the next thought is going to be. Because that thought is, is, comes from God or outside. Therefore, how can it be your action? My action depended on a happening of a thought over which I had no control. If the thought had not happened, my action would not have happened. And I had no control over the happening of that thought. How can I call it my action? See what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Then you take another action and another. And I assure you, every single time, without exception, hundred percent will keep on coming to you. Not my action, not my action. And each time your acceptance will go deeper and deeper and deeper. If I had not happened to be at a certain place at a certain time, and if I had not seen something, my action would not have happened. And I had no control over being at that time, at that place, and much, much more important, for something to happen, which I happened to see. A happening over which I, nobody had any control. <coughs> Similarly, if I had not happened to be at a certain place and time, and seen something, or heard something, or smelled something, or tasted something, or touched something, my action would not have happened. How could I call it my action? Every single time you come to the conclusion, after your own investigation, not my action, not my action, the understanding keeps on going deeper and deeper and deeper until at a particular moment of time, depending on your destiny, God's will, cosmic law, a divine flash of total acceptance is likely to happen. I simply cannot be the doer. And when that final flash happens, there are no more doubts. And you will have peace of mind. <laughs> okay. Would you say that um, this uh, inquiry is more adapted to, to the Western mind or to the mind? I would, yes. It's more precise. It gives you a clear direction. Yeah. Therefore, I would say this gives you a clearer way to go than any other concept I have come across. But is there a kind of a, a step of trust also to to accept the concept, or is it, can it only come by just uh, inqui inqui doing this inquiry? Like accept, because there's so many, you know, so many different teachings, that right. sometimes you have to focus so on... So your them. point is, yeah. can the total acceptance of non doership happen? Without this, it can, of course yeah. it can. Of course it can. Of course it can. But our point is, if it doesn't happen, then what do I do? Then I should do this personal investigation. Mm, yeah. But if it is your destiny not to have to do this personal investigation, it will happen. Okay? Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you. Just one question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forget your name. Aaron. Aaron. Karen. Aaron. Aaron. Yes. Aaron. A yes. Aaron. Yeah. Go yes. ahead. Uh, my question is, Aaron. you mentioned about this divine flash of total yes. understanding. Yes. My experience with your teaching and your concept is that it feels like my intellectual dis uh, understanding is 
99 percent yes. are complete I, I i would be willing to take a lie detector test so to speak yeah yeah my experience is that the teaching is is it is a deepening process and that i have flashes of for example with personal investigation but what i want to bring up is when i hear about a divine flash of total understanding does and it that, have to be no, something that, no no wait a minute wait a minute wait okay. a minute i'm not saying that the final understanding cannot happen without that flash. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Can you clarify that a little bit more? Yeah, I didn't have that flash. <laughs> yeah, what is this flash? This is, this is the thing. The flash makes it sound exotic or... Yeah. <laughs> the, the, I simply cannot be the doer. How, how else would you put it? If yeah. you suddenly have this total condition, I cannot be the doer. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Then that's a flash, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where did that flash come from? Outside. Exactly. I think that the... The reason I brought it up is yes. that the word flash yes. has sort of a sparkling but, uh, quality to it. But I, I to keep it. on saying, it can happen without that flash. Yes. It can happen without that flash. Yes. Okay. In fact, the flash may not be necessary. In fact, personal investigation itself may not be necessary. Exactly. See what I mean? Yes. I do. Even the personal investigation may not be necessary. Each is an individual case. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's what you were wanting? Guru Kripa Janam 
तोड़िया बंधना माया मोहा मोह जाल मे रशील तुझ वीर दयाला सदगुरु तुझ वीर दयाला सदगुरु तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो ओंकार स्वरूपा सदगुरु समर्था सदगुरुराया मध आनंद सागर वैलोक आदार गुरुराव दार गुरु राव कैलोक्यवादार गुरु राव गुरु राज स्वामी असे स्वयं प्रकाश क्या पुरे उदास चंद्र रवि क्या पुरे उदास चंद्र रवि क्या पुढे उदास चंद्र रवि रवि शशि अग्नि मेन तुझ्या रूपा स्वप्रकाश रूप मेरे वेदा स्वप्रकाश रूप मेरे वेदा प्रकाश रूप तुझ नमो तुझ नमो ओंकार स्वरूप सदगुरु समर्था अनाथांशनाथ तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो जनार्दनी गुरु पर ब्रह्मा एका जनार्दनी गुरु पर ब्रह्मा कैलाशे कैला सदा मुखे कैलाशे कैला सदा मुखे कैलाशे कैला सदा मुखे ओंकार स्वरूप सदगुरु समर्था नाथा तुझ नमो 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 तुझ सगुण मनो के गुणे सगुण मनो के गुण रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गो बिंदु रे एक गो बिंदु रे तुझ सगुण मनो के गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो के गुण रे हनुमाने ना हनुमाने ना श्रोति ने दिने की मनती गोविंद रे श्रोति ने दिने की मनती गोविंद रे तुझ सगुण मनो की निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो की निर्गुण रे दृश्य मनो की अदृश्य रे तुझ दृश्य मनो की अदृश्य रे दृश्य अदृश्य रे कु गोविंदु रे दृश्य अदृश्य रे कु गोविंदु रे तुझ 
सगुण मनोखे गुण रे तुझा सगुण मनोखे तुझा आकार मनोखे निराकार रे तुझा आकार मनोखे निराकार रे आकार निराकार आकारो निराकारो एक गोविंद रे तुझा सगुण मनोगी निर्गुण रे तुझा सगुण मनोगी निर्गुण रे तुझा सुन मनोगी सुन रे तुझा सुन मनोगी सोच रे निवृत्ति प्रसाद ज्ञान देवो ज्ञान देव बो बाप रख मरे वरु विठल रे निवृत्ति प्रसारे ज्ञान ले मोरे बाप रख मरे वरु विठल रे तुझ सगुण मनोगे निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनोगे निर्गुण रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गोविंद रे एक गोविंद रे तुझ सगुण मनोगी निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनोगी निर्गुण रे जान दे गेवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तुझ विसर न वावा हे जान दे गेवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तुझ विसर न वावा गुण गाई न आवडी हे ची माझी सर्व जोडी माझी सर्व जोडी हे ची माझी सर्व जोडी नलगे मुक्ति धन संपदा नलगे मुक्ति धन संपदा संत संग दे सदा संत संग दे सदा संत संग दे सदा तू कमाने वावा हे चिदान देव देवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तुझ विसर न वावा चित्ती राहो मुखे तुझे नाम तुझे रूप चित्ती राहो मुखे तुझे नाम देह प्रपंच दास सुखे करो काम सुखे करो काम तुझे रूप चित्ती राहो मुखे तुझे नाम देहदार जो जो क्या छे सदाचार संगाचा आगान देहधारी जो जो चाचे विहित नित्य 
सदाचार संमार्गाचा आदरानुदर्म तुलावरे देहाती गरीबित्य कर्म तुलावरे देहाती गरीबित्य कर्म देह पतंजा जादास सुखे करो काम सुखे करो काम तुझे रूप चित्तिया हो मुखे तुझे नाम तुझा पदी वाहे राम देह भाव सारा पुढे अंतराळी आत्मा सोनी प्रकार तुझ्या पदी वाहे रामी देह भाव सारा पुढे अंतराळी आत्मा सोनी प्रसार नाम तुझे हे तो गोरा नाम तुझे हे तो गोरा हो मुनी निशाना नाम तुझे हे तो गोरा हो मुनी निशाना देह प्रपंच सादास सुखे करो सुखे करो काम तुझे रूप चित्ती राह मुखे तुझे नाम तुझे रूप चित्ती राह मुखे तुझे नाम पांडुरंग 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 थैंक यू